In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Well, welcome as we come together for the celebration of Mass today. The It's the Friday of the fifth week of Lent. Uh, it's uh, getting close to, of course, Holy Week. Uh, on this day, uh, next week, it will, it will be Good Friday, and uh, probably a Good Friday like no other that we've had. But um, certainly through our uh, little YouTube channel uh, on our St Simon's website, we certainly hope to bring you all of the Holy Week ceremonies uh, in addition to the Daily Mass, Holy Thursday, uh, Good Friday and, uh, and Easter. And also next week there will be Mass on the Monday of Holy Week as well. So we're doing our darndest to be able to do this for you and uh, hope it's something that can give you a sense of connection uh, with, your, with your faith and particularly at this most holy and sacred albeit uh, demanding time. Let's just pause for a moment now at the beginning of our Mass. We'll ask God's forgiveness for our sins. Lord Jesus, you raise the dead to life in the Spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, pardon the offences of your people. In your goodness, set us free from the bonds of sin that we have committed in our weakness. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Jeremiah. Jeremiah said, I hear so many disparaging me, terror from every side. Denounce him, let us denounce him. All those who used to be my friends watched for my downfall. Perhaps he will be seduced into error. Then we will master him and take our revenge. But the Lord is at my side, a mighty hero. My opponents will stumble, mastered, confounded by their failure. Everlasting, unforgettable disgrace will be theirs. But you, Lord of hosts, you who probe with justice, who scrutinize the loins and heart, let me see the vengeance you will take on them. For I have committed my cause to you. Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord, for he has delivered the soul of the needy from the hands of evil men. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response to the psalm is, In my distress, I called upon the Lord, and he heard my voice. In my distress, I called upon the Lord, and he heard my voice. I love you, Lord, my strength, my rock, my fortress, my saviour. My God is the rock where I take refuge, my shield, my mighty help my stronghold. The Lord is worthy of all praise. When I call, I am saved from my foes. In my distress I called upon the Lord, and he heard my voice. The waves of death rose about me. The torrents of destruction assailed me. The snares of the grave entangled me. The traps of death confronted me. In my distress I called upon the Lord, and he heard my voice. In my anguish I called to the Lord. I cried to my God for help. From his temple he heard my voice. My cry came to his ears. In my distress I called upon the Lord, and he heard my voice. Please join in the Gospel acclamation. Glory to you, Word of God, Lord Jesus Christ. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. You have the words of everlasting life. 
Glory, Glory to you, Word of God, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. The Jews fetched stones to stone him. So Jesus said to them, I have done many good works for you to see, the works for my Father. For which of these are you stoning me? The Jews answered him, We are not stoning you for doing a good work, but for blasphemy. You are only a man, and you claim to be God. Jesus answered, Is it not written in your law, I said, You are gods? So the law used the word gods of those to whom the word of God was addressed, and the scripture cannot be rejected. Yet you say to someone the Father has consecrated and sent into the world, You are blaspheming, because he says, I am the Son of God. If I am not doing my Father's work, there is no need to believe me. But if I am doing it, then even if you refuse to believe in me, at least believe in the work I do. Then you will know for sure that the Father is in me, and I am in the Father. They wanted to arrest him then, but he eluded them. He then went back again to the far side of the Jordan to stay in the district where John had once been baptizing. Many people who came to him there said, John gave no signs, but all he said about this man was true, and many of them believed in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. It's been said a lot, and... Uh, Fairly truly, I, I think that times like these bring out the best and the worst in us. And that's true, we can become irritable and short-tempered and intolerant and all of those things. At the same time, the, we can, all of us, can find in ourselves a depth of, of goodness, of compassion, of love and care, maybe that we hadn't really given ourselves credit for before. And if that's true of ourselves, it's true of others as well. And maybe when we listen to those words of Jesus before, even if you refuse to believe in me, at least believe in the work I do. And I thought, hmm, that's probably got a little bit of a message for us as we uh, work through everything we're working through at the moment and we'll continue to need to do for a while yet and that is we, to be on the lookout for the good things maybe from people we wouldn't have expected it from maybe from maybe from people with whom we don't necessarily have a relationship we might not not that we don't like them but they're just not part of our life might be people that down the road that we just have seen from time to time it might be someone who's just there in a, in a supermarket. I was talking to someone the other day who is a very, a very kind soul. And uh, she, she had gone to the supermarket and she was able to pick up a, uh, one last pack of, you guessed it, toilet rolls. And two people converged on the empty shelf and saw that she'd taken the last. And... One of them uttered a word which I'm certainly not going to utter here, uh, not, certainly not within the Mass, and the other was clearly very disappointed. This lady, is a, she is a very genuine and compassionate person, and she said, look, looks like I got the last one, but what about I'll give you one, I'll, I'll make do, and uh, I'll give you one, and I'll give you one. And uh, she didn't tell me this to big note herself, uh, it was just something that she was lamenting the fact that people can be, uh, particularly <laughs> she wasn't all that impressed with the language of the one who uh, who just missed out. But nonetheless, she thought, well, she might be doing it tough on many levels and made allowances accordingly. Just, what do we call it these days? The random act of kindness, I suppose it is. And um, if we're on the lookout 
we'll see the works that God does through good people around us. Maybe in these special times when people will lift their game and, and show care and concern and compassion in ways that we had never thought that they could. I mean, an obvious example, of course, is those many, many people working in the health system. Um, people who, a few weeks ago, uh, would have thought their job was pretty straightforward and uh, they may not necessarily be in emergency with people coming in with all sorts of normal areas of uh, diseases and illnesses, but they might be radiographers or any number of other uh, different areas of care and profession. They might be the tea lady that works in the hospital and whatever, and all of a sudden they're, they're in a, a major area of threat, but they're doing their job and God bless them for doing that. And that's, they're, they're there for all of us. So, uh, but other than that, of course, there are all the things that we see in so many people around us if we know them by the works that they do. And that's the little bit of advice within the gospel today that Jesus tells us. To be on the lookout for the good. Sure, we'll be conscious of the not so good. We'll be aware of the bad-tempered person on the road and the times that we're on the road. We'll be aware of the inconvenience that we're going through and so on. We can, can become very negative indeed if we let ourselves go down that path. But let's make a, a promise to ourselves and to the Lord today to be on the lookout for the good things that people do. They are being done. Let's be uh, aware of them. Let's be thankful for them. And let's make our own contribution to those good works in whatever way we can. So we say our prayers of intercession. These prayers actually, you might like to know, are from the, sometimes called the, uh, the divine office, the formal prayers of the church. They're out of the, uh, from the morning prayer each day. And uh, they're essentially general intercession, prayers of the faithful uh, that we have. But they're, uh, they're well written, they're compiled many years ago, but uh, fairly timeless in what they say. Master and Saviour, you have taught us by your life and renewed us by your passion. Do not allow us to grow used to sin. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. You call on us to feed the hungry. Let us deny ourselves some food this day so that we can help our brothers and sisters in their need. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. May we accept from your hands this day of Lent. May we make it yours by deeds of love. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. And this last one maybe has a special value today. End any rebellion within our hearts. Make us generous and willing to share. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, break the bonds of sin which our weaknesses have forged to enchain us. In your loving mercy, forgive our guilt. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. The mystery of this wine. And water. May we come to share in the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share in the humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord God, we ask you to receive us. Please, with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Let us pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept 
sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Lord, look with favour on these sacrificial offerings, that they may help us in our conversion and for the salvation of all the world. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For through the saving passion of your Son, the whole world has received a heart to confess the infinite power of your majesty, since by the wondrous power of the cross, your judgment on the world is now revealed and the authority of Christ crucified. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Peter, our Bishop, all the clergy and all your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may be heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour are yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin 
and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. You live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. May this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it. Lamb of God, you take, take away, away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, only say the word and my soul shall be healed. As you might be aware by now, we say at this time, normally the time in which people would be able to receive Holy Communion, and that uh, not being possible, one of the, the many areas of difficulty that we face and under which we live at the moment, but uh, as in many other areas, we, we do the best we can. And so this little spiritual communion prayer invites the presence of Jesus into our minds and hearts and souls at this uh, very important and challenging time. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, nourished by your saving gifts, we beseech your mercy, so that by the same sacrament with which you feed us in this present age, you may make us partakers of eternal life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thanks for being with us at St. Simon's today. We'll be doing our very best to um, bring you Mass uh, most days. Uh, there won't be a, a Saturday Mass. Uh, as such, but the uh, the weekend mass on for Sunday will be presented each weekend, and uh, through Holy Week into all of next week, we'll uh, look forward to uh, being able to bring you the uh, the marvelous beauty, and it is a beauty of the uh, of the Holy Week masses and ceremonies. And it's great to know that uh, many people are in fact finding this uh, helpful in terms of finding the comfort of the Lord during this, uh, this challenging time. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Almighty God bless you, the Father, 
the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.